this video will be taking a look at my robotic actuator that I've 3D designed and gone ahead and 3D printed. So here it is. This is my sixth version. Uh, and my first version that is that uses a cycloidal gear, gear drive. So my previous versions just to use a planetary gear set. So I decided to change things up and I think the cycloidal is better for a couple different reasons that I'll get into shortly. So here is the actuator. And yeah, I'm overall happy with how it came out. Uh, I think it's it's a little smaller than my other actuators. And yeah, it's a little more compact. Um, the thing I'm especially proud of with this one is that it uses the, an absolute motor encoder, but it uses it on the top. So this one allows for continuous rotations, uh, rotation, which is something I don't really see a lot of in other cycloto actuator designs. So a lot of them are can only go for a certain amount. They can't rotate fully, They're more of servos, but this one can actually rotate 360. So I thought that's interesting. The um, magnet is actually here at the top. It's on the inside. And even when I put this, you can see that it's, it's sticking on. So the magnet's in there, the encoder is also in there. And then the cable comes out through here, which I thought was pretty neat. I like that I was able to do that and have the encoder actually inside of the actuator. So yeah, uh, here's the cables for the brushless motor. And this is the brushless motor I'm using. That's This is what's on the inside. So it's pretty small. It's a 350 kV uh, 5010 brushless motor. So yeah, and that's on the inside. You could probably see it in there. And then it's that's all the way at the bottom. And then cycloto gears are here at the top. The centric bearing is there in the middle and the encoder is here at the top. So um, in regards to like back drivability, uh, it's fairly back drivable, a lot more back drivable than I thought it would be. So I'd consider that a success, uh, back drivability. And uh, another cool thing that I like about this actuator is that I was able to add holes for threaded inserts to be inserted here. So I have four on the outside there and then I have four on the top as well so what this allows you to do is it allows you to mount things uh, attachments and such on both the outside and on the top since this is an outer runner um, it this is the output it doesn't come just from the top it's, it's on the outside uh, I decided to add the outside part as well so that you could connect things and so something it's useful for that I've already gone 3d printed here is this attachment that I've made. Uh, I'm going to be using this for a torque test in the near future. And so that'll just slide on here and it already has the holes so that you could just use some um, three millimeter screws and screw them in there. So that's what the outside part is for. Uh, yeah. So it also uses some 3D printed bearings. So you can kind of see the ball bearings in there. There weren't any that were big enough, uh, wide enough that I saw that I could get on like Amazon that weren't uh, too expensive. So I decided to go ahead and 3D print my own. And so they work pretty well. There's two, there's, there's two sets. So one of the uh, bearings is here at the bottom and then one is also here at the top. It's this little layer there. And so yeah, that's what this is. So this is what the inside looks like. Uh, this is just the top sort of stage. These actual cycloid, this two cycloids, they're in here. Um, you can't see them, but this is how the motor encoder stuff works. So I wanted to be able to do this so it could be continuous, so it could have continuous rotation. And so as you can see here, this top part has the diametrically magnetized uh, encoder magnet. And so, oops. And so that casing goes here on the top. And so you can see the encoder is here. This is a AS5600 absolute uh, motor encoder. And so as you can see, when I turn this outer part, it's this part that is stationary. So this doesn't move. You can think of it as this bottom part. It doesn't move. This middle section is stationary. So that's why the encoder can stay here because it doesn't move it's the outer part that moves. So when this moves, this, um, this top part also moves with this whole system. 
And so when that moves, the magnet turns and then it can get an encoder reading from the encoder. And that's how I'm able to uh, get position feedback and measure velocity and move it to an exact position. Now I'll be showing some of the position control features of the actuator. So here I have my Arduino library that I created. And so this library uh, basically allows me to control the position of the actuator um, and move it to certain positions and move it for certain displacements. It also allows me to get its velocity and like look at how fast it's going at a certain time, as well as uh, it also uses a PID control loop. Um, so that's pretty uh, interesting. Uh, I like that I can change some of the constants for the P, I, and D uh, variables, and I can uh, make it make the actuator move faster or accelerate faster or accelerate slower. All right, so let me first uh, move it. So right here I have a program, and I'm going to first move it at a positive velocity, so it's going to move counter or clockwise, and it's going to go to position zero. So here we have our positions relative on the map. And so we want it to move it to zero, so the arrow should be pointing to zero. And we'll play the sketch. All right, there we go. So it's about zero. Um, something else I've noticed with the brushless motor is that uh, it's not really this, I'm using this uh, Rio Rand brushless motor controller and it's not really that good. Um, I probably recommend using something like O-Drive if, if you want to control this uh, brushless motor or this kind of actuator with precision. Uh, this, is, this is not really that precise, especially with a brushless motor. It might be more precise with something like a DC motor, which is what I plan to use in the future, but yeah. So let's move it to 90 degrees. And so it's still in the positive direction, so it should move clockwise as well. There we go. So it's about 90. Let's go to 270. We're about 270, and again, it's not perfect. It's a little off. Um, I guess that could be fixed with the PID loop or con constants up here, but sometimes it's not that precise even when you do change it. Um, another thing that I should also show is that you can move it for a certain displacement. So right now I'm moving it to a certain position, but let's say I wanted to move it uh, like a couple rotations. So let's say I wanted to move it uh, 360 degrees, so one rotation. I could do that as well with my library. So now it should rotate once and come back to its exact position. All right, so about its exact position, you can do more than one rotation as well, as many as you want. Uh, so if I do 360 times two, it should revolute two times. All right, about, and again, it's still kind of changing, losing some of its accuracy there. So yeah, um, another thing I can also do is I can, it, it, when I upload the sketch, I can open the serial monitor and I can view some uh, data. So I'll open up the serial monitor. All right, so the first column shows uh, its target count. And so this is all just relating to the PID control loop. And so this is its target. So its target right now is uh, 2,051 counts. And so it's counting, this second column is showing the actual amount of counts. And as it goes up, the error decreases. And the last column shows its velocity in RPM. So here we got a max velocity of 83 RPM. And I believe the max velocity for this actuator, uh, I think I've gotten up to 200. So let's see if we can get 200. Um, I will use a different, a diff some different constants to get to 200. And I'll do like, uh, maybe eight rotations. All right, we got close to 200. So it's about 200. Uh, I've seen it get to 200 and past 200. It's, it's pretty close to 200. Um, but yeah, so it goes decently fast, I guess. Uh, 
nothing I would want to use for like a, a quadruped robot. Uh, I don't think it has enough torque, but it, it's good for if you wanted to make like a RC car or something like that. Uh, something doesn't that doesn't require a lot of torque and maybe um, might require some amount of a good amount of a decent amount of speed. So yeah, here we have it. Um, another thing I can do is look at it at the serial on the serial plotter. So I'll just do two rotations again, and I'll open up the serial plotter. And it'll show me, so it's showing me a graph of the data that it's plotting in the serial monitor. So that blue line is its target and that target stays constant as time goes on. So that's why it's a linear line, uh, a flat linear line parallel to the uh, X axis. And so then this red line is the count. And so as you can see, as time goes on, that count gets closer to its target value, which decreases the error over time. And then this green line is the um, velocity. So it's not exactly accelerating con at a constant rate. It's about constant after, after some time. But you can see that the velocity is increasing over time. So yeah, there we have it.